Hello and welcome to the tutorial video for the Mother's Day kits um, or the I Love You Mum kits. These also come in I Love You Mom if you are um, American, Canadian or just prefer to say mom, mom. If you're watching this I'm guessing you've bought this kit and so you're checking out how to do the stitches. I'll get to that in a second and if you've stumbled across this video and you haven't bought the kit, um, if you would like the kit then it will be linked below, otherwise you, you're welcome to stay for the madness. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to show you how to separate your thread and thread up your needle and then we'll move over and I'll show you how to do the stitches. Now as a caveat, my setup here is very very basic. When I take you through the French knots, the stitches are a bit blurry. I do apologise, I didn't realise that until after I'd finished filming. However, I have a, another video where I take you through the 10 most basic stitches for hand embroidery and what I'll do is I'll try and link to um, each one of those stitches in this video so if you want to hop on over and see a more thorough tutorial on each stitch, you can do that too. But they're all fairly easy so don't, don't stress. And also, as an aside, if you are making this for your mum, um, you cannot mess up. They will love it no matter what. Of that, I am certain. Okay, let's crack on. We are going to start with the French knots in the middle of the sunflowers. And for that, we use two browns. These two sunflowers here, they have a mix. It's just sort of, you add the, the knots wherever you fancy. This one, I think you can just about see the darker brown is in the middle and then the lighter brown is around the side. You don't have to do that, it's just what I fancied, so feel free to do what you like. So you want to grab your thread, which is a six strand piece of floss, and you want to pinch it and just tap the end to separate, separate the threads. I don't know if you can see, but if you tap the end it tends to separate them. We are going to use five strands, so you just want to separate one strand of floss from the rest. Now it can be tricky. You should be able to just pull it gently but sometimes as you can see it starts to tug in which case don't force it because it will knot up <laughs> and you can end up losing thread so there's you there you can see that I've pulled out one strand leaving five this is the amount that we're going to use for the French knots in the middle of the sunflowers now in your kit I do include one of these little um, needle threaders. Now the reason why I use these as opposed to the ones that you're probably more familiar with is that that little, that fine little bit of wire often comes out if you pull too hard. Um, so you can use that to thread up your needle but I'm going to show you a trick so that hopefully you won't need that at all because trust me there's never one around when you need one. So you just want to pinch, you don't even see it, so you pinch the, the tip of the thread but right in between the pads of your finger and thumb and then you take <laughs> the tip of your needle and you place it over the top and you're kind of, <laughs> it's hard to explain but you're basically keeping the needle in one spot and teasing the thread through the eye of the needle. And there we go, she says, nearly pulling the thread back out again. Um, if that's too tricky, just use a needle threader. There's no shame, it's just always useful to know that there's a way that works that doesn't require a needle threader. Um, and then just to make sure that you don't accidentally pull your thread out of your um, hoop as you are stitching, you can do a quilter's knot at the end of the thread. Okay, so to do a quilter's um, knot is, is really easy. Basically, what you want to do is just whoopsie you want to get the end of the thread loop it around the needle pinch it very gently in between your fingers you don't want to do it too tight otherwise you won't be able to pull the needle through and that's what you want to do you want to pull the needle through and the thread and your fingers are holding that little knot in place and there you go so easy so quick so useful and now you're ready to stitch up your french knots so let's go to the hoop and do that Okay, you want to pull your needle through the thread wherever you want to make the knot. And then it's quite simple, you just need to wrap the thread around your needle once and then poke the needle back through the thread right next to where you first pulled the needle up. 
and it's as simple as that. I'll do another one so that you can see what I mean. And you'll also see that when I come to poking the needle back through the thread here, I'll try again. <laughs> I tend to hold the thread in place with my thumb and that is simply because I don't want the thread to knot. Now it's time to do the petals and for the petals I use three strands of thread and you can split those off in exactly the same way as I showed you before. Thread up your needle, quilters knot and away you go. Okay, you need to bring your needle up at the top of the petal and as you can see here, down at the bottom of the petal in the middle. And then when you bring it back up, you're gonna choose a side of your previous stitch and you're gonna bring your needle up just slightly below it, next and slightly below. And the reason for this is that it helps you create a curve as you stitch down. And each stitch is gonna be ever so slightly smaller than the last. And as you get to the sides of the petals, you're not going to bring your needle down right to the bottom of the petal by the French knots. As you can see here, you're going to finish your stitch just a little bit higher. You're gonna follow the curve. And then you're gonna do the other side. And away you go, you have a petal. Just like the petals, the leaves are done with three strands and we're going to be using a fishbone stitch. For this one, you want to bring your needle up at the top of the leaf, just like you did for the petals. Only this time, you're only gonna come down a stitch length in the middle. And then you're going to choose a side and you're gonna come back up just ever so slightly down from the top, like you did before again with the petals. And you're going to put your needle back down at the bottom and in the middle of the original stitch. So you're gonna keep it center basically. Each stitch on either side will be on a slant and then you're gonna go over to the other side and do exactly the same. So you're ever so slightly crisscrossing as you're stitching. And you're just going to keep on doing that until you go down and hit one of those petals. And then I'll tell you what to do next. Now, when you come to the bottom and you start to hit the petals there, you won't be able to stitch straight to the middle of the leaf. So like I'm doing here, you just do the little sections that you can see. Here I'm doing to the left of the leaf. And then when I've done that, I move on over to the other side, to the right hand side of the leaf bringing it over to the middle of the leaf again. And then I went back over to the left just to do that little section that was blank. Again, it's a bit like coloring in. Essentially, you want to try and bring your needle down in the middle, unless that means cutting over a petal, in which case just go as far as you can. Now the font you can do in two ways. I'm gonna show you how to do a back stitch and also how to then do a whipped back stitch, which is the one that I use and the one that you see in the pictures of this kit. Uh, what, which one you do is completely up to you. The whipped back stitch does use up more thread, but you will have enough in your kit to do both. And to do it as I have in the kit, you will need three strands of the thread. So bring your needle up at the top of your letter and you're just gonna bring it down again a stitch length ahead, so it's a regular forward stitch. And then you're gonna bring it back up a stitch length ahead of your original stitch, leaving a gap. 
and then you're going to go backwards and push your needle back down into your original stitch. So you're going to join them up. This is why it's called the back stitch. Coming forward again, a stitch length ahead. And then stitch backwards, putting your needle into the end of your last stitch. And you just do this each time until you've finished your letter. This is why it's called the back stitch. A little tip, if you're going around a curve, just make your stitches a little smaller because it makes them a little easier to control and you get a much better even look. And that is the back stitch. In order to do a whipped back stitch, you bring your needle back up and then you loop it underneath your original stitches. And if you look, you'll see that I'm looping underneath the stitch on the, on the right hand side and only on the right hand side. Now it doesn't matter if you do it on the left, but whichever side you choose, stick with that side. Uh, it, it will just make your, um, your letters look a lot neater or your, your, your stitches basically. The whipped back stitch will look a lot neater if it's all consistently looped. And you can always faff with the um, stitches with your needle like I'm doing here too. And then when you get to the end, you just need to pop your needle back down through the start of your original stitch and you're done. And then lastly, for the circle, you're going to want to do a split stitch and we're going to use four strands of thread for that. So we're going to separate two out and you, you guessed it, thread it up, quilter's knot and away you go. Okay, split stitches are easy unless you're filming. As you're about to find out, bring your needle up and then bring it back down again a stitch length ahead. So it's just a regular forward stitch. And then you're going to bring your needle back up in the middle of your original stitch, which you're going to be, you're going to be splitting it basically, hence the name split stitch. And then again, bring your needle down a stitch length ahead. and then up in the middle of your stitch. Each time you're splitting the stitch that you just made. And just keep going like that until you reach the end. Now when you finish with your stitches, all you have to do at the back, and then once you've finished, I've done this very basically, but you want to fold the fabric in and I do provide a piece of card that you can then, I can never do this backwards while filming, but you can just slide it in there and that will just keep the excess fabric away from your work so that you can then put it on the wall or your mum can. Don't worry about the wonkiness of any stitches. If you are giving this to your mum, she will love it. I am certain. All right, you are done. Well done. And I'll see you in the next one. Bye.